walks into a bar. He's got a bottle of uh, vodka in one hand from 2007. And maybe I should pass this if you guys want to run through the crowd and everyone can smell it. And he's got a bottle of whiskey from 1917 in the other pocket. And you can fill in the rest if you'd like. But more importantly than the joke about the man walking into the bar, I think we need to think about what the man in the bar sees. The man in the bar sees some things that are new, some things that are old, some things that are glasses. So this person gets excited. Maybe he or she is going to have a drink. This man sees some bar tools, perhaps. Maybe there's some nice antique spoons, or if you come to my bar, you'll be bored with way too many tools. You'll see some ice, maybe, and uh, if you're lucky, you'll see some bottles. Now, when people think about what they're going to drink, they often will see a bottle and say, I want that. Give me a Grealous Martini straight up, extra dry, three dollars. Give me a Tangerine and Tonic. But if a person doesn't know right away what he or she is interested in, what do they ask for? The cocktail list. The cocktail list is the hottest thing under the sun. This cocktailian bartending, this mixology, this bar chefery, this is all something which uh, is, is brand new and very exciting, right? No, this is, this is very, very old. The cocktail is something that, uh, at least since I was young, is something that was before dinner. And I'm sure some of you have had cocktails before dinner. Uh, for me, maybe it was a glass of wine that mom was having, or a tangerine and tonic that dad was having, or maybe it was um, this cocktail, shrimp cocktail, right? That's a perfect cocktail. It's uh, meant to be eaten before dinner. It's served in a conical glass. It's what you do before dinner. But the cocktail itself is something that has gone on not to just mean what we're drinking before dinner. It, it's an entire experience. The cocktail is an hour, le, le aperitif if you're in France. It's a time to get together with friends and to sit and to relax and to enjoy. But where does this word come from? The cocktail perhaps came from Betsy Flanagan. Does anyone know this story? It's a fun one. Our heroine, Betsy Flanagan, uh, one of the women who helped to drive the British from our country, decided she was going to go to a neighbor's farm. This neighbor happened to have sympathy with uh, the, the British, and she stole a chicken from the neighbor and took the tail of that chicken and decided, oh, I'll just garnish the drink that my friends are drinking. Therefore, we can show our superiority. We stole from these Tories. Great story. You know, maybe this is something that shows a little bit about the history of the cocktail. We're talking 1776, 1778. But the story didn't show up until the early part of the 20th century. So that one doesn't hold a lot of water. Um, the cocktail is something that has forced us, through repeated use, to change it up a little bit. There's the Collins. There's the Sour. There's the Fizz. There are Flips. There are all sorts of things that people can encounter. But these drinks became a little bit too difficult to make. There was a point at which going into the kitchen, uh, grabbing a lemon or a lime, cutting it in half and squeezing it into a glass became really labor intensive. <laughs> and then, of course, you had to go to the pantry and grab some sugar and find a spoon and stir the sugar into the lime juice and then put some ice in the glass and finally you get to your gin. And all of that time, you could have just ripped open a nice little packet of highs. Highs Tom Collins mix. The lemon's in, you just add gin. So life is simple all of a sudden. We can, we can forget about sitting down or going out or talking to friends and family. We can just rip open a pack, dump it into a glass, add the intoxicant. Now we're talking. That's a good way to have a cocktail. Maybe even grabbing the gin is too much work. Mint julep. Dr. Jacks, everything's in there. You've got your bourbon, you've got your mint, you've got your ice that has been melted, probably. But thank goodness for your convenience, you can go buy a bottle and just open it up. Hell, forget the ice, just drink it out of the bottle. But these are all things that throughout time, we've, we've learned to define. We've learned what a julep is, we've learned what a sour is, we've learned what a fizz is, what a fix is. We've talked about all of these things that are inside of the glass. We've talked about the cocktail. We've defined the cocktail. We look back in history, and we can share a little bit about that near the end, but what is really happening in the bar? Where do people really find inspiration? Is it the cocktail list? They look down and they say, ooh, look, this is a 1794. This is a perfect drink for Francisco. It's got chocolate mole bitters in it. Or, oh, gosh, look at this. There's a, a bourbon flip. 
while he's coming in, he's going to get his egg drink. You can look at a cocktail menu and find something that you're going to be so excited about and so enthusiastic about, but I don't think that that's the end-all be-all. What it is is what you're smelling on your breath, right? Our friend who studied rat biology knows this right away. What you want to do is smell your neighbor's breath. If it smells like a tongue with a mint leaf on it, it's got to be delicious, right? I don't think so. But we do need to talk with our neighbors at bars. We do need to make sure that we, we understand a little bit about what's happening in a certain bar. Or if it's your living room, or if it's a friend's living room, you find out what they have. Come on over, we've got a little bitters and vermouth for you. Oh, come on over, we've got a little bit of uh, mom's milk punch that's the ancient recipe. Or, you can just do what everybody else does. Look at the pretty colors. Ooh, red, that's a good color, right? Sorry, Ted. Uh, <laughs> red is a very effective color. Bacardi learned that pretty quickly. Um, and you can talk about what's in the glass. Now, if, if you were a real nerd like me, you'd look at this and you'd say, this is a big mistake, look at this. Bacardi Mojito cocktail, how many drinks are they actually selling here? Because we all know that the Bacardi is white rum with grenadine and lemon juice, right? Come on, there was that famous court case back in the 40s? Okay. The Mojito is a pretty interesting drink, right? Couldn't be more popular. All you have to do is get a DJ to spin some music and you just muddle away your limes and your mint and everybody dances in the crowd and you see young people with lots of flesh and you see tongues probably. And then there's the cocktail again. The cocktail keeps rearing its head time and time again. But I'm not here to really talk so much about cocktails or fizzes or flips or sours or any of these things. I think the real important drink that's going to tell you a little bit more about why I think what's new is actually very old is the humble bowl of punch. Just yesterday, there was a bridal shower that I made a bowl of punch for. And I thought, oh, perfect, bridal showers. You always have to have a bowl of punch for that, right? Make something pretty and flowery and let people come in and ladle it out. But punch is where it's at, people. Punch is the opportunity to forget about watching a bartender flex his muscles and shake perfect ice cubes and have some fun. It's already done. You walk in, you ladle a little bit out, somebody has a little cup, ooh, that's good, what are you having? I don't know, oh, have some of my punch. Punch is the real deal. Punch allows us to take the focus away from what's inside the glass. You think these guys are talking about how great that lime is? They're probably talking about how they're going to take over another country, if you ask me. I mean, look at those wigs. These guys are ready to colonize. Um, they are probably talking about what's more important than what's in the bowl. They're probably talking about the rest of their lives. The punch. A simple thing. Does everybody know about punch? You only need one hand for punch. Spirits. Water. Citrus, spice, sugar. From the Hindi word punch, I probably mispronounced that, I'm sure, but um, that's what punch is all about. It's very simple. And we should all be making punch, not just because it's cool to know where punch comes from. Cocktail historian John Gertzen tells me punch is the number five in Hindustani. Great. What's outside the glass? What are we talking about? If we're lucky, we get to talk with people like this who say, well, you know, when one rat walks up to another, he smells that rat's breath and figures out what's cool. <laughs> I'm so happy we met. Um, these people are probably not talking about what's on their breath, because it smells of tobacco, they're smoking pipes. Old King Cole, he was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. What did he call for? A pipe, and a bowl, and Fiddler's Three. What's in the bowl? It's not in the song. They're talking about the party that they're having. That's what's important in cocktails today, um, the punch. It's not the cocktail, it's the punch. Now, this is something that could have been easily interrupted by a little bit of a mistake that we like to not think about too much, but prohibition, huge mistake. <laughs> Our country thought, well, you know what's happening? Men are going out after work and getting drunk. They're just sitting around, drinking beer, forgetting about their home life, and you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna take the beer away? Well, we'll, we'll tell them that we're taking the liquor away. And this, this, this little thing about keeping beer around, well, well, we'll just put that under the blanket as well. Because that's what the government did. Beer was supposed to be legal during prohibition. The manufacture, sale, distribution of spirits was meant to be prohibition, but they took beer away too. So what does a man do after work? He goes to the speakeasy. And he gets in trouble, probably, because if the police show up and he gets arrested, how is he then going to provide for the family? <laughs> So I might say something a little controversial, that uh, the saloon wasn't such a bad thing. The saloon was an opportunity for men 
to get together and talk about what was outside of the glass. Sure, what's inside of the glass is intoxicating. Sure, they were able to get a little bit of a buzz on. And unfortunately, some of them got too big of a buzz on, and they started to get into uh, sherbety problems. They get a little rattled. Uh, the elephant's trunk grabbed them, perhaps. But this is not the key. The key should be community, talking with one another, going to a bar, and finding out what other people are drinking. There's fun to intoxicate, to, to be intoxicated. There's uh, bragging rights to go out and say, I had 75 shots of whiskey last week. <laughs> Don't tell my doctor, but wait till I show you how I can do 80 next week. That's not fun. What's fun is going into an environment and enjoying what is outside of the glass. And that's what I think is old. As human beings, how do we learn to do anything? How do we learn to sell perfume? How do we learn to commune? Where did TEDx come from? We got together. We decided to talk about what's happening. This is not brand new information. This is society. And that is what the bar is all about. That's what getting together, deciding, what are we going to drink? Is it Vox Vodka on the rocks? Because it says right here they have Vox Vodka. I don't know. Maybe it is. But for me, what you're drinking is not that important. I know it's probably going to shock a lot of you because we spend so many hours and so many muscle fibers stretching every single night to make you beautiful drinks. I hope we do, but I don't care about the drinks. What's really important is all of you coming. Um, that cocktail that we talked about earlier, it's a fairly important thing. In 1806, it was defined very clearly as bitters and spirits and water and sugar. And that's a cocktail. But if you ask me, bartenders really don't serve cocktails. Bartenders serve people. And that's not new. That's very old. So next time you come in, don't worry about what I'm serving you. Just worry about talking to your friends. Let's have a nice little conversation back and forth. And I hope that you can enjoy a little cocktail later today. A word to the wise, some advice from a friend in the room. Don't drink the cocktail until you pull the straws out of it. Done, done, done. <laughs> Thank you all very much.